Uh, joining us is a man who is no stranger to the Observer. Uh, let me say a pleasant good evening to veteran journalist Ken Ali. Pleasant good evening. Good evening to you. Good evening to you, Mikey. Uh, your team at the studio and your many uh, viewers and listeners. Yeah. We, we just had Barry Garcia on, and uh, as I, I told the, the public, viewing public, it is not going to be a walk in the park. At, at no time at all should they uh, underestimate uh, the battle that is before us. Uh, the electorates are in for quite, quite a ride. And uh, I think he made it quite clear that the government is not going to lay down and play dead. Uh, with, that, with that said, there's a lot of information out there. And again, I always enjoy your writing. Please. Keep it up. It, it's, re I mean, really, Thank really you. informative. You, you, I have one here where Richards is tipped to replace Dial Singh. Battle scar Terence Dial Singh is likely to be replaced in favor of Dr. Mariam Abdul Richards as the People's National Movement's general election candidate for St. Joseph. Dr. Richards, who is serving on state and private sector boards of directors, has the backing of senior PM officials to contest the marginal constituency. But this is someone who was at many of every press conference in the heights of the pandemic, uh, guiding us accordingly. So, I, I mean, what were we witnessing there, Mr. Ali? Well, you see, it ties in a bit with what uh, Barry Garcia is saying. The PLM is aiming for the third straight victory, and they know it's not going to be an easy one because the record of a performance hasn't been uh, quite a sa satisfactory. A number of things they're doing, and one of which pertains to the choice of candidates. So they're looking to make uh, dramatic changes. In fact, we've already seen the candidate for Shagornas East, which is quite notable, and uh, the candidate for Varatari. Sour, which I've written about, and several other uh, marginal seats. Now, for this seat, they understand that Terence Dial Singh won. It was, a margin, it was a marginal seat, and he won by several hundred votes only. Um, there are issues with respect to his performance as Minister of Health and also his performance as the Member of Parliament. In addition to that, Dr. Abdul Richards is uh, well, extremely well favored along the corridors of power. She was given the country's second highest award two years ago after the pandemic. She sits uh, on ERHA board, several boards, and uh, Angus Tour board, and so on. And she's extremely well favored, and she has uh, experience. Um, she has a PhD in uh, medical sciences, and so on. Mr. Dial Singh is a pharmacist. So she's extremely well liked, and she is strongly favored to be the candidate as part of this refleeting that the PNM is doing, really, getting new uh, candidates to appear. Uh, if you note, um, Mikey and, and, and your viewers and listeners, the Prime Minister announced recently what he's con concentrating now is his legacy and trying to leave the party on a strong foundation of stability and for its future. One of the other things uh, he is also doing, which is very clear, and I've also written about it is that he is fast tracking uh, Stuart Young into a possible leadership. I don't know you two have been monitoring that, but uh, what's happening with Stuart Young is that after nine years of, of call member acting, now he has been placed in the uh, acting position as Prime Minister. He's been addressing a number of constituency conferences. He's, of course, handling the negotiations with Venezuela and natural gas. He also sits in in the uh, office of the Prime Minister, so he, he is involved in many aspects of national governance, and uh, he is Prime Minister's uh, Gary uh, Sobers. Um, but there is a strong kickback within uh, the PNM to him, and I don't think it is a race or an ethnic matter, as it is a class matter. You know, um, over the ni last nine years, Mike, you and I have spoken about this, I've written about this, and I know you talk about this also is the poor have gotten poorer, the rich have gotten richer. The statistics are there. I have written exhaustively about private sector organizations getting richer, 
the import food car cartel uh, imports a 7.3 billion dollars a small cartel uh, in in uh, food every year and so on and um, Stuart Young is seen as representative of that cartel and uh, well not that cartel of that one uh, percent that that cream of the society the privileged class the privileged class and there's a strong kickback I don't know if you've been reading Professor Selwyn Kojo who has been saying that and he, he said very instructively that in the 2020 general election, the PNM got 220,000 votes, which we know, know of course. And um, Professor Kujo says 190,000 of them are black people. Now, I don't know how we, how we figure that out, but it is well known that the black working class supports the PNM. Stuart Young, a meteoric rise, a meteoric rise, because just over 10 years ago, he was a backroom attorney in yeah. St. Vincent Street. Yeah. Now he's the acting prime minister. He's all over the place. And, and not, not, and only that, not only that, Mr. Ali, he's also the chairman of the party, and that's something reserved Absolutely. for people, senior levels of the party. I mean, this is a guy who yeah. came in just the other day, and all of a sudden, as you said, meteoric rise, but uh, chairman of the party, I mean, when you think about it, you think about, yeah. like, whether it be um, Imbert or Privat, or the France, case maybe. France. Yeah. Francis Privat. Yeah. When I was a young guy growing up, there was Francis Privat, chairman of the PNM, and he had a bearing about him. He had a courage, and so on. He was next only in stature to Dr. Williams, you know. And now you have somebody, I mean, has come out of nowhere before our very eyes and become chairman of a party at 68 years old. And say what you like, we may or may not like the PNM, but they're a Caribbean institution, and he has come out of nowhere, and they've been propped up by the black working class and the East West corridor as a fact and here you he has come he comes from a very privileged uh, background and he's the chairman of the party and likely to be uh, the successor to dr rowley so a very very um, interesting times mikey taking place within the pnl yep uh, and, and you did in your writing you said that much of the rage against young's upper class background is centered on the needs of the black group being left unattended or neglected uh, according to Professor Selwyn Kujo, who previously argued that. I, I mean, many people, of course, in their minds are saying, that, is that going to be a hard sell, or is it going to be something that once he's anointed by Dr. Rowley, then it's given he is going to be able to sit in that big chair? Yeah, and that is the, the key issue because the PNM does not have a track record of rebellion. Uh, you, when you look at changes in office throughout the years, when Dr. Williams in 1973 said he was uh, going to um, retire, he said, um, I will lay me down, and he quoted after a popular um, a, a song, and so on. And then he went back and uh, he was supported. Uh, when, well, twice Mr. Manning called early election, and so on. Um, when President Ellis Clark, a uh, uh, named George Chambers, as, as Prime Minister, and so on. They have never been a track record of rebellion within the PNM. They've been quite decent through the years, and, and they've put up some candidates that not everybody favored, and so on. But culturally, the PNM is not one to, for public backlash. So one wonders, uh, as you rightly said, what is going to be the PNM's response to Stuart Young rising so suddenly? Uh, and so on, whether the Women's League is going to be happy about that, uh, Camille Robinson, Regis, and others, or uh, what is, where is Fitzgerald Hines on this, and so on, would Professor Kujo speak out? Or would it be that uh, keeping it in, in, um, in, within the nature of the PNM, that he will just rise and, and, and take over the party, and so on? A party that really has moved from its moorings of, of defending and upholding uh, the working class people country. I mean, the statistics the statistic bear, it, bear them out, uh, Mikey. You know, the rich have gotten richer, banks imposing um, um, heavy charges on people. Small, 6,000 small and medium sized businesses have gone out of business. The cost of food has, has gone up. Five fuel prices and up the cost of transportation and so on and so forth. You know, we could identify all these aspects of the quality of life of the working class man has gone down over the nine, last nine years. Cost of food, my key has gone up by an average of 73%. Public officers got 4% salary increase to cover nearly 10 years. Many people.
people haven't, haven't gotten the fall off from the petrol train um, shutdown. Many people don't understand how dramatic or how extensive that was. Not just the 5,500 workers and the supply companies and so on, but the fence line community. Those who know Marabella would know there's a place called Carachel, popular alignment place and so on. Now that has fallen too. It has shut down like tire shops and, and many, many other stores because people are not employed. And and the fall off has been a, a major one. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you know yeah, yeah. Uh, what and, happens as we head to the election. Yeah, and as I continue to read what you said, you said some commentators have accused Rowley of heavily favoring the tiny business oligarchs, some of whom he represents as member of parliament for Diggle Martin West. And research has shown that the rich has generally grown richer in recent years, while many in the working class have become poor. Um, you know, and, and then, of course, you have Mr. Kojo again with his comments. But uh, if, if I go back to, again, July 2019, you know, the Prime Minister, of course, said that he has declared that the nation cannot hide from the reality that in a diverse society aiming to do well, African people are not doing as well as we expected or as well as we might. Now, when making such a statement, one would then think that whatever the policies may be that he's going to outline and implement would be to elevate those afro trinbagonians rather than simply just, you know, shelf them or sideline them. Well, you know, I'm glad you on that because he handpicked Professor, Vice Chancellor of the University, Hilary Beckles, to address the African Emancipation Day celebrations on, on August 1st. And uh, uh, maybe he expected a quiet, docile speech, but the only media didn't report um, Professor Beckles adequately. But he stood up there and said the underperformance of the Africans in the country has to be dealt with, and it has to be dealt with by leadership change. What he meant by that, we, we don't know. He didn't explain himself. But he he also has spoken out. I thought that was a very profound statement coming from coming on the date on which he spoke and at the occasion, which was of course attended by the Prime Minister too. So you have that issue with uh, everybody, a number of people speaking out and even the Prime Minister acknowledging it. But sometimes you have a sense, Mikey, I don't know if I'm the only one who feels that way, that the Prime Minister speaks about issues as if he's not connected with it, as if he is not, shouldn't be part of the solution. He talks about corruption in the country. I'm now reading the procurement regulator's report, which is, is very eye-opening. Most of the state enterprises have not reported to the procurement regulator and so on. So all of that is pu the public purse for which there is not accountability. And the prime minister doesn't seem to take ownership on any of these issues. But uh, that uh, principal matter we're talking about with Stuart Young, I think if anything could rock the PNM within the next few weeks and months, it could be that. And if it does not, well, it really shows uh, that they just line up and, and follow the leader. Well, well it, it appears as though um, everyone is singing from the same hymn book because uh, here you have the same Stuart Young making some statement that uh, it was because of the opposition uh, that Mr. Jindal, who is a businessman, Naveen Jindal, uh, and is, in his words, basically saying that the opposition is not um, welcoming anyone to come here and make any investments. So he echoed those sentiments as well, which I found very strange and, and very disingenuous because there were so many other reasons that Mr. Jindal simply yeah. could not set up shop. Yeah, they, uh, in fact, I've also been writing about this new company um, that is now the front runner, a company called Oando from uh, Nigeria. And they've had a number of financial issues, but now they're the front runner. And, um, but they also have a lot of issues with respect to funding. Uh, the thing with agenda is that he was just brought and put at the top of the list without asking him any questions about funding, marketing, technical issues, and so on. Um, so that was grossly unfair. And you see, uh, I feel sometimes I feel um, these things are not properly explained by, by the opposition. This is a country in which the uh, investors have been fleeing at a terrific rate. Two years ago, and this is, a, 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 I'm, I'm telling you from what a report, a United Nations report, says that we had a flight of investors worth uh, a net flight of 917 million US. Last year, it was valued 700 and something million US. There's more investors leaving and investors coming in, right? From Arcelo Metal to 
whole sort of thing. And in every other Caribbean country, um, in, there were more investors coming in than leaving. Well, you know, Guyana, for obvious reasons, there are a lot of investors. But even the smaller islands like Grenada and St. Kitts, uh, Nevis, uh, Barbados, Grenada, and so on, St. Vincent, and so on, they're getting in investors in hospitality, in, in tourism, and so on. But investors are leaving Trinidad and Tobago. And it's, and it's not just because of the, because of the crude oil, uh, um, natural gas, um, limited supplies, also because of crime and other issues. You know, we have a range of issues because there, there's something called ease of doing business. Right. In Trinidad and Tobago, it, it takes months to get simple things done. Mikey, we had a huge breach in telecom um, the other day at TSTT. It's going to almost a year now. One of the reasons investors come in is when they have a stable in, in um, telecom because telecom is critically important in what you're doing. We haven't seen that report yet. Uh, what caused it? And there are so many other reasons, you know, the instability in the society, the, uh, and so on. Um, all of those are reasons why investors are not coming to Trinidad and Tobago. I don't think that it is properly explained uh, by many stakeholders, and, uh, and because of that, the government continues to spread its own narrative on these issues. It's unfair, it's disingenuous to blame anyone for the gender I, I agree with you. Finally, um, you know, you spoke earlier about the whole lineup what, what we can expect uh, especially with St. Joseph uh, in this upcoming general election but Dr. Kirk Megu the PRO of the United National Congress recalled that in the 2020 election the UNC fell short by 2,530 votes in St. Joseph and San Fernando West from winning the election so I mean when you look at that I mean that says quite a lot well, you see, uh, the, the uh, issue with that here is that we do not have the proportional representation system that Guyana has. All right? uh, we have first past the post, so you could, uh, you could get the popular vote and still not win the election, yeah, you know? You get large turnouts in your base and so on, but you have to win seat by seat. And that is what it is, Guyana has proportional representation and so on. Our um, of, of relevance here, Mikey, I would want to suggest is that the mar marginal seats for which the PNM has begun to do active work. This gentleman they've named up to Yunus Ibrahim has deep roots in Barata Resawa. Deep roots, he's a professor. Professional. He's a businessman, former president of the Supermarkets Association, and so on. I'm not suggesting he's going to win, but I'm saying that the PNM understands the seat, the demographics of the seat. They've also put uh, Rishi Sukai, who is a minister in the Ministry of Works, so therefore he could deliver, and they've put him in the marginal seat of Shigwana Seas. What they're doing is putting people who have office so they could deliver. Uh, to the re respective um, constituents, which is unlike the opposition, which doesn't have um, taxpayer-owned well, offices that they could dispense with goods and services to constituencies. Yeah. So uh, um, Maruga Tableland is another one, and so on. And I don't want to suggest we keep our eyes on those seats. Yeah, very much so. Um, and, and the NACTA poll, the recent NACTA poll, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at it. Uh, any comment? Uh, Mikey, uh, I don't give much credence to actor poll. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, I've been around a long time. Has an actor ever asked you a question? Never. All right. So I don't want to demean their integrity, but I don't know. I mean, but uh, I, to say some things that are quite obvious to us, uh, you know, um, a lot of work has to be done, and I think the issue of uh, uh, political unity uh, uh, in the opposition should be a uh, uh, most foremost one. I wrote about that too, and uh, that issue, and I think that everybody understands the imperative of opposition unity, especially since time is running out. Yeah, and I think there should be a, a poll on how many people have actually been contacted by NACTA. So, you know, I think so. Hey, again, I want to thank you so much for taking time out. It's always a pleasure to have you on, and I, I you know, it's always good to have you here because you, your writing is great. Keep up the good work, especially in the sunshine and exposing many of these issues. Uh, so, my good friend, do enjoy the rest of your evening, and uh, Sorry, look, you, look forward to having you on again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me and best wishes. Thank you. Dear.